Hi, I'm June Baker, and welcome to Health Watch, your show for health topics from A to Z with local medical professionals. On today's show, we'll welcome Dr. Kevin Price, a hospitalist at Brunswick Community Hospital, and Stephanie Heron, the hospital's emergency department manager. Dr. Price will share information about the hospitalist program, and in honor of Heart Month, he will answer some common questions that we have about heart health. Then Stephanie Heron will share information about a new service now offered at Brunswick Community Hospital, teleneurology. Stay tuned for the next half hour as we bring you Health Watch on ATMC TV. Our first guest is Dr. Kevin Price of the Novant Inpatient Care Specialists. Well, thank you so much for being here today, Dr. Price. It's great to see you again. It's great to see you too, June. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Um, the last time we had you um, on our show, you were still in your private practice, uh, which was Cascade Primary Care. So, but I understand now that you are a hospitalist at Brunswick Community Hospital. And how are you liking that so far? It's going great, June. We've been there about two months almost. Uh -huh. And I really do miss uh, some aspects of Cascade Primary Care. I'm sure. Certainly do miss uh, the patients. Yeah. But I do get the opportunity to see them from time to time in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And I've really been enjoying getting acclimated to working in that setting. Uh huh. Well, if you don't mind my asking, um, what led you to the decision to become a hospitalist and leave your primary care practice? Well, I think there's a lot of factors that went into it, June. But uh, one of the main factors is the opening of the hospital mm -hmm. and some of the exciting new opportunities that are arising here in Brunswick County. That's true. And I really am excited to be part of that. Um, and it gives me the opportunity, in addition, uh, to work with a lot of great healthcare professionals uh -huh. and work in a, more of an acute care setting. Mm -hmm. Another aspect I really enjoy is uh, using my critical thinking skills. Oh, yeah, I never even thought about that. Yeah. And, you know, some of the uh, aspects of internal medicine deal with more of the acute illness. Um, and so I'm really enjoying that aspect of it. Mm -hmm. At the same time, missing the day-to-day -day, uh, mm -hmm. encounters with my patients. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was like leaving good friends behind, I'm That's sure. That's right. Mm -hmm. So well, what have you enjoyed most um, so far about being a hospitalist, other than your critical thinking skills? Well, again, I think I really like the opportunity to work with uh, various healthcare providers oh, sure. and healthcare professionals, the different physicians that I get to see on a day-to-day -day basis, mm -hmm. and the great nurses and, and all the healthcare uh, team, mm -hmm. which is something that you don't get the opportunity to do in a private practice. Well, uh, that's true. Yeah. You know, you get to work with professionals, but usually it's more in a, over the phone or in right. sort of a distant kind of relationship. But mm -hmm. here, uh, we work as a team every day. Mm -hmm. trying to get the best outcomes obviously for the patients. Mm -hmm. And with the new hospital uh, coming this uh, coming summer, it's going to be even more exciting to make that move. I know we're all excited about it, both the patients and all the, the mm -hmm. uh, healthcare professionals at the hospital are looking forward to the opening of the hospital and, and the new services and uh, that will be available to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great time for healthcare in Brunswick County. Uh, for those of um, our viewers who haven't met you before, Tell us a little bit about your background and your education. Uh, well, I went to school in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. Osteopathic Medical School in uh -huh. Philadelphia. Uh, I did my residency training in internal medicine in Pawtucket, Rhode Island, mm -hmm. which is a Brown University affiliate. Uh, and then I practiced for a few short years in Rhode Island before making the move to North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And we've really loved it here. We've been here for three years, and uh, the family and I really enjoy being here. Mm, I, I'm sure your family is enjoying uh, North Carolina. It's, it is a beautiful state, and the weather is mostly beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it is. And we've had the opportunity to enjoy a lot of the outdoor activities since we've been here. Well, that's true. Outdoor activities are great here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, great. Um, we have had the chance to meet uh, two of your partners on the hospitalist team um, on our show, Dr. Dan Kubley and Dr. David Koenig. Um, but I still think it would help us a little bit to hear once again uh, what the role of a hospitalist is and, and what your day-to-day -day activities are like. Absolutely. Uh, Dr. Koenig and Dr. Kubli, great physicians. Yeah, and they are. have uh, transitioned from their own outpatient practices uh, over the years into mm -hmm. the traditional role of hospitalist. And uh, I, I know they enjoy it very much. And, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the hospitalist program or the hospitalist profession sort of started 
uh, in California about maybe 15 really? years ago. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, it started in the University of San, uh, I think in San Francisco. Uh -huh. And w what it's transitioned to is, is somebody uh, who acts as, a, as an advocate for the patient, mm -hmm. who not only cares for their acute medical problem, but helps them navigate the complex you know, healthcare field. Oh. Let's now welcome Stephanie Heron, Brunswick Community Hospital's Emergency Department Manager. Stephanie, thank you so much for being with us today. You're welcome. Um, I understand that you are the manager of the emergency department at Brunswick Community Hospital. Um, sh tell us a little bit about what that entails. Yes, I oversee the daily operations in the emergency department. Um, we are currently a 12-bed emergency department and we employ board certified emergency physicians. Um, we have approximately 45 staff members um, in our department that are there to provide service 24 hours, seven days a week. Um, our nurses are certified um, in advanced cardiac life support and pediatric life support in our department to pro provide those services for our patients. Mm -hmm. And you're the manager of the entire department? Yes, I am. You must be very busy. Yes, we are. <laughs> How long have you been at the hospital, Steph? I've been at Brunswick Community Hospital for about 15 years now. Wow, that's a long time. It is. Yeah, that's great. Um, well, I understand that you have an important new service at the hospital, and it's called teleneurology. Um, can you explain to me what teleneurology is? Yes, it's actually a system where we can provide um, consultation by a special neurologist, uh -huh. and we use special equipment, um, telemedicine equipment, with a little machine on, on rolling wheels, and we can actually take that to the bedside so that this physician can actually speak and examine the patient that way and provide a consult for their care. Oh, well, let's talk a little bit about how that, that works. Now, you say there's a machine, and can the, does the patient see the doctor, too, on the other end, or how does that work? They do. Um, when the patient originally comes into the emergency department, uh -huh. um, what we look for is anyone that's having a neurological emergency. Mm -hmm. And at that point, our ED physician will call, specialist on call, and they'll give them the information that we need to have a consult. That specialist will review his information, call back and speak to our ED physician about that patient. At that time, he decides whether or not he needs to see the patient or if it can just be a phone consult. If it's a phone consult, he'll send the recommendations to our ED physician for care. Now, if he'd like to see the patient, we take this machine to the bedside at the foot of the bed and turn it on. And the physician, the neurologist, actually comes on the screen and he is able to zoom in and actually talk to the patient. He can see and hear everything in the room. Mm -hmm. And as well as the patient being able to respond back to them and talk to them over this webcam. Wow, that's real technology. It is. <laughs> well, how quickly can all this happen? When we make the initial call for the mm -hmm. consults, the um, specialist on call neurologist will contact our ED physician within 15 minutes. Oh. Um, once they're finished with their telephone consult, we have the uh, machine in the room already, and he'll come on and he'll do his assessment of the patient. It usually takes about 25 minutes to complete the whole assessment. Mm -hmm. But the process has begun relatively quickly once the patient gets to the bed, right? Yes. As soon as we know that they're having a neurological emergency, we can put in the call for the consult. Wow. That's really interesting. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about how you think um, this new technology will help our patients? Yes, it's going to help us to provide excellent care to our patients in the emergency department. Mm -hmm. It gives them faster access to a specialist in neurology to be able to assess their condition and to be able to give us recommendations on treatment for their care. That helps us to provide um, better care mm -hmm. and also to help for their um, quality of life and the outcome for this patient. Mm -hmm. So it will produce better outcomes then? Yes, it will. Well, are there specific types of patients that you envision this new technology will help? Yes, um, we can use this technology for anyone with a neurological deficit uh -huh. and such diagnosis as stroke or TIA, mm -hmm. um, seizures, or even patients that may have some mental status changes. Mm -hmm. So it's most beneficial to patients who are having a stroke? Yes, it is, very much so. Um, from the onset of stroke symptoms, you have a very small window to be able to give a medication. It's a clot-busting medication called TPA. Mm -hmm. um, you have three hours from the beginning of onset of those right. symptoms to give it. So the sooner the patient can get to the emergency department to be evaluated and we have that consultation done, mm -hmm. we could potentially give that life-saving medication at that time. Oh, so it would cut down on that time. I have read about that. Uh, that um, medicine in, and I understand that it has, you have a very limited time to do that. So the sooner yes. you make it the diagnosis, the better. Yes. Wow.